Spirit of the Lord was leading you today as you led us in intercession. Thank you, everybody who has logged in tonight. This is Glorious Power Church Prayer Line. And I want us to share the word of God so that we may continue in prayer. And tonight I want to speak about our hiding place. And I'm going to read um, from the book of Psalms chapter 32. And I'm going to read all of it, but I'm going to start from uh, verse 7 and then I'll read the other verses. Uh, the, uh, the Bible says, you can, you can mute yourself, please. Uh, if you're in a noisy place, kindly mute yourself. Amen. Psalms 32, I'm going to read verse 7 first and then we'll continue. The Bible says, you are my hiding place, you Lord. Protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. You are my hiding place, you Lord. Protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. And I just want to ask you a question tonight. Where is your hiding place? Where is your hiding place? As I was meditating about this verse, I thought about uh, when we used to play hide and seek. And I thought about how during that time we could play hide and seek. I would make sure that I get a place to hide and be very quiet and make sure that nobody sees me. And I will not even share my hiding place with anyone so that next time we play hide and seek, my hiding place will be secure. And I thought about it. I've sometimes watched my kids play hide and seek. And sometimes I, I have noticed that the young one prays may go and hide somewhere. And she's there hiding. But unfortunately, she just hides her, her head. But the legs can be seen. And I, as I think about the hiding place, I was thinking about those two scenarios. And I thought about how in life sometimes we look for hiding places. When the going gets tough, we look for places we can hide. We look for shelter. We look for a place where we can find refuge. But David, when he is, was writing these Psalms, verse and he notes and declares, you are my hiding place, you Lord. Protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. And I want to talk about some of the things that hinder us from making God our hiding place. That place you can go and be secure. That place you can go and be safe from troubles. That place you can go and just be Come, even when the storms are raging in his presence. One of the greatest things that has hindered many of us from getting there or hiding in the Lord is sin. And from verse 1, the Bible says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. David starts by telling us about the joy of somebody whose sins have been forgiven. The Bible says that for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And David is here saying, how blessed, how fortunate, how prosperous, how favored by God is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. One thing I love about our God is that when we confess our sins, he is just to forgive. He is merciful. He forgives our sins. And not only that, he separates us from that sin. As far as the west is from the east, that is how far the Lord separates us from sin. So that the next time or the moment you continue now staying or remaining in that hiding place, the Lord does not identify you with the sin that you confessed yesterday. Because once he forgives, he forgives and separates you from that iniquity. So David is saying, blessed 
prosperous, fortunate, favored is that person whose transgression is forgiven. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute wickedness. That person who is not loaded with the condemnation, that person whose guilt, who, whose guilt is taken off, that person whose load of iniquity or sin or transgression has been lifted off his shoulders, that person is blessed and in whose spirit there is no deceit. And then David continues to say, when I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all the day long. David is saying, I am not just speaking about how blessed the person who is forgiven is out of just reading from somewhere, but I'm talking about it from experience. You know, when you experience something, you are able to relate or give a testimony because you connect or you, you relate with the experience. So David is saying, there was a time when I covered my sin when i kept silent about my sin for you to experience forgiveness for you to enter into this category of being blessed we will have to take a step and say i'm not going to keep quiet in my sin i will not be silent about the sin i will take a step and confess this sin so david is telling us this is what happened when i sinned and we all know about it when he took uh, Uriah's wife and he committed sin and he went to an extent of trying to cover that sin with another sin. The Bible says David is telling us when he was silent about his sin, my body wasted away through my groanings all the day long. And I was thinking about uh, how sometimes we suffer even physically because of guilt, because of sin. And confessed sin can, can bring even health problems to us. So David is saying, this is what I experienced. When I kept silent, my body was wasting away. When I kept silent, I did not have any joy. I was groaning all the day long. And verse 4, he kept, he continued saying, for, you are, for day and night, your hand of displeasure was heavy upon me. You know, the reason why many of us are not getting to that hiding place in the presence of the Lord is because the hand of the Lord, the hand of displeasure is heavy upon many of us because of unconfessed sin. And that is what the Spirit of the Lord wants us to deal with tonight, unconfessed sin. You know, you, 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 you sin today, you do not confess, you don't, you don't, you try to cover it up. You are silent about it. Tomorrow you continue doing the same and then it weighs you down. Guilt and condemnation eats you up to the extent that you cannot go before the Lord, to the extent that your Christian work starts diminishing and to the extent that the, the conscience or the spirit of the Lord that keeps warning us and telling us about walking in righteousness is eventually silenced or the spirit of the Lord is eventually quenched and that's why you find somebody who used to walk in the ways of the Lord after living a continuous sinful life as sins after sin without confession eventually they don't see any big deal they can do anything but tonight the Holy Spirit of the Lord is leading us into repentance we are supposed to confess all our transgression and then verse 5 he's at verse 4, he continues to say, my energy, my vitality, my strength was drained away as with burning heat of summer. Can you come think about that? Think about that lack of energy. And the reason behind that lack of energy, it is because the guilt of sin is eating you up, is consuming you. I know this is not a favorite topic to talk about. But I have to obey the spirit of the Lord as he is leading us. That we need to get to that place where we need to acknowledge. Yes, I have sinned before the Lord. I need to confess my sins. I need to set my life straight with the Lord. And then verse 5, he said, I acknowledged my sin to you. You know, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. So many of us have been hindered 
Many of our progresses are hindered because of the accusations that the devil is bringing at the throne of grace concerning us. And these accusations only stand because of unconfessed sins. When we do not acknowledge our sins, and I was reading today something about a, 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 a pupil or a student who went to class late. And the teacher asked this boy, why are you late for class? And the boy said, my mother served me breakfast late. And the story continued that the teacher asked the, the mother, why did you serve your son breakfast late? And the, and the mother said, oh, the milkman brought in the milk late. And the milkman blamed the farmer and then the farmer blamed the cow and the cow blamed the farmer because he did not get grass or he was not fed on time and the cycle continues and it is the same thing that happens in our daily life instead of acknowledging our sin we as human beings we tend to lay blame we blame our friends. We blame our relatives. We blame even the people we do not know. We blame. And this blame game started from the Garden of Eden. When God found that uh, Adam had moved from the, the place of fellowship. And when God came down, as usual, he, was, he used to come at the cool of the day to speak or to have fellowship with Adam. When God came down, he realized that Adam is not at the place of fellowship. And God asked Adam, Adam, where are you? Where are you? And guess what Adam said? He said, oh, and God asked, have you eaten the fruit which I told you not to eat? What did Adam do? He blamed the woman. What did the woman do? The woman blamed the serpent. And it is the same, same thing that many of us are doing. The reason why we are moving away from our hiding place, from the presence of the Lord, it is because we do not want to take that initiative of acknowledging our sins. David is saying here, I acknowledged my sin to you and I did not hide my wickedness. I said, I will confess all my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Listen to that powerful statement. He said, I will confess all my transgressions to the Lord. I acknowledged my sin to you. The Holy Spirit tonight is urging us. Can we quit the blame game? Can we take responsibility? Each and every one of us, you know where you slipped. You know where you made a mistake. You know why. You know where the guilt comes from. You know why you are laden with condemnation. You know why. You feel like when you pray, your prayers are not going up to heaven. You know. We may not know, but you know. You cannot hide it from God. You cannot hide it from yourself. And that is the weapon that the enemy uses when we have unconfessed sin. And, and I remember there is a verse that David said, Lord, forgive me even the presumptuous sin. Forgive me even from the unknown sins, anything that I don't even know. Please, Lord, forgive me. So David acknowledged his sin. He said, okay, Lord, I did this. I acknowledge I did this. And he said, I'm not going to hide my wickedness. Yes, I am wicked. I have done this. I have done this. I have done this, Lord. And he said, I will confess all, not some, but he confessed all the transgression. And listen to this powerful statement. The Bible says that after he did that, you forgave the guilt of my sin. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God who forgave David is the same God who we serve tonight. Is the same God that we are worshiping today. He is waiting for how long will the accuser of the brethren keep accusing you, piling accusations before the throne. You go before the Lord and you're praying, Lord, make me this, Lord, give me this breakthrough. And then the devil stands and say, no, she does not deserve it. She did this, she did that, she did that. And those accusations stand because of unconfessed sins. 
But when we go before the Lord and acknowledge, yes, Lord, I have done this. I acknowledge my sin. I acknowledge my transgression. I repent before you. Forgive me, O oh God. Our God is faithful and just to forgive. And because of the blood of Jesus and because Jesus Christ is our advocate, when we confess our sins, then the Lord have mercy upon us and every accusation of the enemy cannot be able to stand against us in Jesus name. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you for forgiveness. In a time when you are near and may be found. Surely when the great waters of trial and distressing times overflow, they will not reach the spirit in him. You know, when, when the great waters of trials and distressing come and you have unconfessed sin within you, you lack even the confidence to exercise faith. You lack even the confidence of believing that your prayers will be answered. But the Bible says that let everybody pray. Let everybody pray to you for forgiveness. This is not just for those. It's not for a particular group of people, but for everybody to pray. The Lord is inviting all of us to pray and seek for forgiveness. In times when he is near, in times when he may be found. It is important to make sure that we do not harbor unconfessed sin within us. Because Jesus is coming soon. A time will come and even if you want to repent, there will be no chance of repentance. But instead of waiting for that time to come, why don't you just take the step today and just confess your sins before the Lord? And then after that, that's when David is saying the verse we started with, you are my hiding place. You Lord, protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. And then the Lord responds. We find David starts by telling us how blessed is the person whose sins is forgiven. And he goes on and say, you know what? I'm not talking about this because I read somewhere or because I had a priest talk about it. I am writing about this because I know I was there. Oh, I kept silent about my sin. I, my body wasted away. My energy was, was deteriorating. I had no strength left in me. I was groaning day in and out. But when I acknowledged my sins when I asked for forgiveness the Lord forgave me and then he says let everybody who is God let them pray and ask for forgiveness because our God is faithful and just to forgive and then he says that God is our hiding place he is his hiding place and this is what the Lord does he delivers you he surrounds you with songs of deliverance. And then we find a response from God himself. In verse 8, the Lord says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Sinful nature should not be our lifestyle. I'm not preaching this tonight to give a certificate or to give a perm permission for you to sin today and sin tomorrow and sin the other day, as long as pastor said that we can repent. No, the Bible says in verse eight, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. When you make the Lord your hiding place, when the Lord becomes your deliverer, the Lord also becomes the one who gives you direction. We need to allow ourselves to learn from the Lord. We need to allow ourselves to learn from the Lord. God's desire is to teach us the right way to go. Yes, you've tried, you failed on your own. But yes, he has forgiven us. But yet, he still desires to teach us and show us the way we should go. And so when it comes to that, we need to be humble and to submit to him for him to teach us. Verse 9 says, Do not be like the horse or like the mule which have no understanding, whose trapping include bridle and rein to hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come near to you. So the, the Lord is saying, do not be like a horse, do not be like a mule. 
Don't be like an animal. You know, an animal has no understanding. An animal does things without understanding. An animal can go to the same place. Even if you keep hitting that animal, it will still go to that place. The Bible says that the, the horse needs a bridle on, or a rein so that it may know the direction. And the Lord is saying, no, you are above that. You have understanding. You are not like an animal. You can be able to submit and just learn from me. Let me teach you. And those who do not allow the Lord to teach them, verse 10 says, many are the sorrows of the wicked. Those who take the other route and say, okay, I don't care anymore. I will I keep on repenting and repenting. I may as well be wicked. The Bible says that the wicked have many sorrows. But he who trusts in and relies on the Lord shall be surrounded with compassion and loving kindness. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous. You who seek you actively seek right standing with him. Shout for joy, all you upright. Praise the name of the Lord. We are, For those who are joining us now, we are speaking about the hiding place and why many of us move from the hiding place. And we, we are discussing about unconfessed sin. Unconfessed sin has led many from the hiding place, from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so in conclusion of our sermon today, so that we get into prayer, we have said that we need to rest in God. He is our hiding place. We need to learn from God because God desires to teach us the right way. And we need to submit to God. Animals often do their own things and, and the Lord is cautioning us. We are not like the horse. We, we are not like animals. We have understanding. Verse 10, the Bible says we, are, we should trust in God because in him we will find comfort and we will find love. And when we make the Lord our hiding place, verse 11 says that we, we rejoice in God because we are forgiven. There is a joy that comes from knowing that you are forgiven. You are set free. You are set free. So as we get to prayers tonight, we have learned from David and he knew what it meant to experience forgiveness from God. And because of his experience, that is why he chose to make it known unto us. And that is why he has given us a path. He has elaborated a path, a path to true forgiveness. Are we going to continue blaming? Or are we going to confess our sins and ask for forgiveness? That is the question that the Spirit of the Lord is asking us tonight. And so I just want you to take a minute. I believe every time the Lord gives us a word, it is because he loves us with an everlasting love. And he desires that we may dwell in his presence. But the only thing that can separate us from God is sin. It is sin that separated God and man from the beginning. I just want you to take a moment. I'm going to put some music in the background. Just take a moment and just tell the Lord. Acknowledge your sin before the Lord. Acknowledge your sin. David said, I acknowledged my sin. When he was silent, his body was turned away. His energy was drained. But he said, I acknowledged my sin. I confessed all my transgression. I did not hide my wickedness. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Just go before the Lord. Just go before the Lord and have a moment. Have a moment of just confessing as the Lord leads you, as the Spirit of the Lord leads you. Tonight we are declaring there will be no condemnation or accusation brought against us at the throne of grace. 
because the power of the blood of Jesus is there to cleanse us, to clean us, to make us holy and acceptable. Our own righteousness is just like filthy rags before the presence of the Lord. But our God is faithful and just. He clothes us with righteousness. He clothes us with his righteousness. He clothes us with his righteousness. Oh, shalaba seke talababu. Somebody just go before the Lord. It is time now for you to speak to the Lord and say, I'm not going to carry this burden again. I am not going to hide. I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to cover my sin. Whoever covers their sin, do not prosper. Oh, shakata babo zai. Reshe tabaganda. Lema seke talabo zai. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you're full of mercy. You're full of mercy, Lord. You're full of mercy, oh God. We thank you, Lord, because you are full of mercy and compassion, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hear our prayer, Lord. Have mercy upon us, Jehovah. Where, Lord, we have covered up our sins, Lord. Where we have covered up our transgressions. Lord, have mercy, King of our glory. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, King of our glory. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Shalom, Seketa. Orima Shereba Bosai. Rima sherere bo seketa Rima shalaba babo sai Rekete rere ya shalaba bo Rente rere ya zai Have mercy Lord Have mercy King of all glory O ribo shirere ya zai Rama shetala baba bo zai Yes in the name of Jesus Yes in the name of Jesus We give you glory We give you glory We give you glory as we continue in prayer, the Bible says in the book of Zechariah chapter 3 about Joshua the high priest. And the Bible says from verse 1, then the guardian, the guiding angel showed me Joshua the high priest representing disobedient sinful Israel standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at Joshua's right hand to be his adversary and to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, even the Lord who now and ever has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a log snatched and rescued from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel of the Lord. He spoke to those who stood before him saying, remove the filthy garments from him. And he said to Joshua, see, I have caused your wickedness to be taken away from you. I will clothe you and beautify you with the rich robes of forgiveness. And I, Zechariah said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with rich garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. This scenario we find that because of the disobedience of Israel, the, the Lord was showing a vision. And he showed that Joshua, being the high priest representing Israel, he was standing there before the angel. But guess who else was standing there? Satan was standing right there at the right hand to be his adversary and to accuse him. I believe that those moments you've had, you have repented before the Lord. And so the devil, the adversary has no testimony, has no accusation against you. And tonight in the name of Jesus, just like the Lord commanded that the filthy garments be taken away out of Joshua and that he may be clothed with rich garments of forgiveness. The same way we are doing it tonight in the name of Jesus. 
every filthy garment, every filthiness, every impurity that may have covered us tonight in the name of Jesus. We declare because of the forgiveness of sin and because of the blood of Jesus that we are cleansed. We are cleansed in the name of Jesus. We will not suffer shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Every guilt, every condemnation, we declare tonight in the name of Jesus that it shall not oppress us in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, King of all glory. Oh, just like you stood and decided, defended Joshua that time, oh God. We thank you because when you forgive, dear Father, you take away every filthiness, oh God. We thank you because of the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that is cleansing us, Lord, the blood of Jesus that is cleansing our minds, the blood of Jesus that is cleansing our hearts, the blood of Jesus that is cleansing our bodies, the blood of Jesus that is cleansing our homes, oh God, the blood of Jesus that is cleansing everything that is called by our names, dear Father. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, King of all glory. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins tonight. Thank you, King of all glory. Oh, for taking away every guilt, for taking away every shame, for taking away every condemnation in the name of Jesus. We thank you, King of our glory, and we declare restoration, dear Father. Oh, for the many, Lord, who had been oppressed by the unconfessed sin and the guilt and the blame, dear Father. We declare, Lord, that you are restoring the joy of salvation upon their hearts, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. Lord, because you shall keep them safe. You shall keep us secure in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, dear Father. We honor you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. And we pray in the name of Jesus that from today, oh God, that we're going to help us, Lord, to hear you, Lord, as you instruct us, Lord, as you lead us in the direction and in the ways that we should go. We declare tonight in the name of Jesus an opening of our spiritual ears now in the name of Jesus, where our spiritual ears had become deaf, Lord, had been deafened by the guilt and by the sins, oh Lord. We declare there is an opening of our ears tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray for somebody who has not heard your voice in a long time. From tonight, because of that confession and the forgiveness, dear Father, we declare there shall be clear communication between us and you, oh God. There shall be clear communication between you and them, dear Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, my God and my Father. Oh, I pray for somebody who even lost vision, dear Father, because of unconfessed to sin, dear Lord. I declare restoration of vision, restoration of spiritual insight, restoration of revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, in the name of Jesus, I want to de- to break and every yoke of fear, all that has hindered many from coming into your presence, from coming into your hiding place because of unconfessed sin. Every fear that has been holding them back, I break those cords now. I break those chains right Right now, in the name of Jesus, and I command you, devil, you adversary, you accuser of the brethren, from tonight, in the name of Jesus, I declare you've got no power, you have no legal ground to oppress the people of God, to oppress us in the name of Jesus, because by the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been set free in Jesus' name. We give you glory, we give you honor, in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen, 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 amen. amen. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Thank you all who have logged in. Uh, let us continue. Uh, let us continue walking in righteousness, walking in the ways of the Lord. And do not let guilt or condemnation take you away from the hiding place. Do not allow that. Do not allow that. Oh, because the time you stay away from the hiding place, you are exposed for the enemy's attack. You give the enemy a legal ground. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Thank you all who have logged in tonight. This is Glorious Power Church Prayer Line Conference. We meet here every Tuesday 
for prayers, for fellowship, for hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to the church. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, he that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And in this prayer line, we thank the Lord because the Spirit of the Lord has been speaking to us, guiding us. And I believe that each and every one of us, we are growing. We are growing every day. We are learning every week of what the Lord desires of us so that we may continue walking in his will. May the Lord God bless you once again. Uh, I said this is Glorious Power Church. Uh, we meet at 40 Vino Square every Sunday for our services. I can see that we have many people logged in even from out of state. Maybe one time you are in, in Massachusetts, you can worship with us at Glorious Power Church. Every Sunday, our main service is at 11 uh, a.m. to 12.30. Uh, we meet um, uh, one and a half hour to worship and uh, share the word of the Lord. We are at 40 Vino Square in North Chelmsford. We also have morning glory every day, Monday through Friday. We meet from 9 to 10 that every day, Monday through Friday for prayers. If you are not at work or maybe you have a day off, come and let us pray. Come and let us seek the face of the Lord. Morning glory hours, 9 a.m. to 10 30, Monday through Friday. On Saturday, 10 to 12, we have the the teens and the twins classes, the ages of 8 to 12 and 13 to 17. We meet for read, sharing the word of God for fun and just uh, learning who God is, who Jesus is. And it's, it's a very important program for our children. So if you have teens, you have twins, please bring them two hours every Saturday. We are there in church and the Lord is going to bless you. Every year we do a youth breakfast or a youth summit. Our youth summit is coming up. Uh, maybe you've seen the, the flyers are up. The registration is open. Uh, we have our summit on that 10th of November. Registration is open. Uh, it's also for the teens, the twins, and the young adults. And it's going to be a full day event. We are not just going to do breakfast this year, but we are going to be providing the three meals. We're going to be providing breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's going to be a full day in the presence of the Lord with the young people. And I believe that it's going to be powerful, powerful. I'm going to continue sharing the flyers and the registration link. Uh, so check your WhatsApp, sh check your Facebook, check your Instagram, or you can even Google for that information. And I believe that the Lord is going to bless you. Um, I don't think I have any more announcements. So um, are we just going to share the words of grace? Thank you all who logged in tonight. May the Lord God bless you. And I hope to see you next Tuesday. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord God bless you. Let's meet again next Tuesday.